Hey guys, Brian Castro from Better Chess Training. And in today's video, we're going to discuss principles for studying chess books effectively. And if you enjoy the content on my channel, consider subscribing for future videos. So the first principle we're going to discuss is that of selection. Uh, although this seems uh, pretty straightforward, um, the fact of the matter is that chess players like to collect chess books. How many chess books do you have in your collection? Um, I probably have about 50. I uh, uh, donated uh, about half of them to uh, the public library uh, here locally, but I still got about 50 in my, um, on my bookshelf. And um, also, for your current needs, you're going to have to be very selective about which chess books you're going to uh, spend your time studying. If uh, time wasn't a factor and factors like our memory uh, weren't a factor, then you can study whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted. Um, now, of course, um, there are, you know, you can have, you could study chess books for enjoyment as well. But uh, for this video, we're mainly uh, talking about studying chess books for improvement. So uh, there are several selection criteria for uh, the chess books for studying. The first one is your level. So you need to make sure that the chess book is appropriate for your level. If you're a beginner, uh, you need chess books that are geared towards beginners, that have more explanatory text uh, and examples that aren't too complex. As you get stronger, uh, you know, obviously you're going to be able to understand more because you won't need some of the basics explained, uh, but you have to make sure there's, there's books that are appropriate for, say, 1800 level that um, are... Uh, not appropriate or maybe too easy for masters. And there's there's things for masters and grandmasters that are maybe too um, complex for for uh, people under 2,000. So um, no matter what level you're at, there's books that might be a little too hard for you uh, in terms of level. The next thing you need to look at is your needs. For example, if you're not strong in the end game and you're losing a lot of games in the end game, then you might want to uh, study... Um, Books on the end game. Seems pretty straightforward, right? But uh, um, there's a, you want to balance enjoyment. Obviously, we want to, chess is for enjoyment, but with uh, sometimes we need to attack our weaknesses, which sometimes isn't fun. So I know some people don't, for example, like studying the end game or they don't like studying the middle game. But if it's a weakness, then you need to uh, spend some time on it. Okay, the next thing would be uh, sort of relevance, and I put here opening repertoire. So, for example, if you uh, play a lot of uh, D4 openings, closed systems, uh, I, I do quite a bit, then when you're studying books, even within, like, say, a games collection of a specific player, you might have focus on the games that are more similar to your openings. And, and with a lot of uh, D4 openings, things can transpose or are similar structures. So openings that, that have those structures will be more appropriate for you and you should focus more of your time on it. And uh, finally, you want to balance your uh, selection, meaning um, you don't want to have uh, 10 uh, endgame books and then no books on the opening or no books on the middle game. Okay, so you want to have uh, a few books in each. Uh, now, you're not going to study all of them at the same time, but you want to have uh, one in the key areas. So you want to have some for endgame, uh, middle game and strategy, uh, tactics, and openings okay so those are some of the major um, sections there okay so that's selection our second principle is that of active engagement okay uh, i was once reading a chess blog and this this person had been um, i don't know if they were bragging or maybe just uh, stating that they've been studying or they've been reading through um like 800 master games and uh, i'm sure there is some benefit from it but I would say that if you took that time, instead of just reading through it passively and actively studied it, you can learn a lot more from just, say, 10% of uh, those games. So uh, we want to actively engage. Why do we want to do that? Because our mind is very efficient. What do I mean by that? That means that our mind does not want to spend uh, resources remembering material that it doesn't deem uh, mission critical. OK, so you want to um, and, and the only way the main way it tells uh, when that is, is by uh, you actively engaging with the material. The more you actively engage with it, the more your mind says, you know what, um, I'm, 
this person is trying to, uh, you know, the commander is trying to uh, actively engage with this stuff. It must be important, and so we better commit it to our long-term memory. So how do we do that? Uh, the primary way is to ask questions. So uh, the fact is you might not get the answer right away because maybe it's too complex or maybe the concept isn't quite gelling yet, but you want to ask, why is this made? You know, what if, you know, what if this master made this move? And then you want to analyze. So you want to actively engage uh, with the material. A great way to do this is with solitary chess. And I have videos and articles about this. Uh, it's one of uh, my favorite and I think most effective training methods. It's also, it can be quite, um, it's not as exciting as say just doing tactical problems or something like that. So um, a very uh, effective method, but it automatically engages you because you're looking at the positions and trying to solve them yourself and then you're studying what the master did. So you're looking at what you did, you're looking at what the master did, and your mind is going to try to, and you're going to actively try to uh, find what the difference is when there's a difference in those moves. Um, the final tip for active uh, engagement is no chess engines or limit the amount of use of the chess engines. It's kind of like, um, think about doing a math problem. You could do it by hand, you know, or you can use a calculator, okay? One of them is going to engage your mind and the other one is not going to engage it. So um, especially if you're under, I would say, 2,000, I would not uh, use the chess engines when you are studying uh, chess books. I think uh, people become too dependent on them. I have become too dependent on them in the past, and I've really cut down on my use of chess engines and started to think for myself. Okay. So that's active engagement. Our next principle comes from uh, cognitive science, and it's uh, called the uh, spaced learning or the distributed learning. And, and the whole idea here is that uh, let's say you study a master game, okay? Uh, you study it on one day, and you make an effort to understand it, you actively engage like we talked about, and then later, okay, and it could be a day later, it could be four or five days later, it could be a month later, you look at it again, okay? And you study it again. Now, you can look at it from different angles, okay? For example, uh, in your first study, you might notice certain positions that are interesting from a strategic point of view, okay? And then maybe next time you delve into more of the tactical side of it, okay? There, or, or maybe you look at it from uh, the opening, the pawn structure, and then later you're going to look at it from the dynamic, uh, maybe initiative and development and looking at uh, temporary advantages. So looking at it from different angles, uh, some of this comes naturally as you study other things. So you might notice a pawn structure from one game and how it applies and how the masters uh, uh, treated it similarly. Okay, So that will help you um, to... to um, engage it more and, and do it as over time. And the other effect of this is that when you study something on a certain day and then you study it later, in between your mind is associating it with things you've studied before or things you've studied in between as well. And um, it's very interesting how this happens. It, it, uh, uh, your, your mind wants to, is trying to resolve conflicts and it's trying to um, take in what you're bringing in and make sense of it. So, uh, you know, if, let's say, for example, you are studying a strategy book about uh, peace placements, okay? And then maybe later you're studying a master game with uh, Capablanca or, or one of the world champions, and you're noticing the peace coordination. And now your brain is automatically, and you can help it along uh, using these principles, to put those associations together so that when you're in your game and you see a similar type of position, your mind will retrieve the principles and the concepts that you need to make the proper move. So space out your review over time. Our fourth principle is uh, very similar to active engagement and also can play into um, our space learning, and that's active recall. So uh, the idea is this, is that if you're reading a chess book, Okay, you might see a specific move that a master makes. And if you read it again later, or you see this position later, you might think, oh, this is familiar. And then when you read it, you say, oh, yeah, I remember. That's what he played. But on active recall, you need to look at that position and say, what did the master play here? Okay, or what should be played here from your study? And uh, when you have a force to actively produce the solution, uh, it strengthens both your memory 
as well as reinforces your understanding. It can also point out uh, maybe some areas where you're, you maybe don't understand concepts as well as you think you might. So uh, what I want you to do in your games is select the most instructive positions and ideas. And then using uh, chess databases, or you can create flashcards. I used to make uh, flashcards. I used to print out these cards with the chessboard, and then I would write. It was very, now computers make it a lot easier, and, and you know you can use printers with index cards. Uh, it's quite wonderful, actually. Um, and then there's programs out there like Anki or Super Memo, where you can actually uh, create flashcards on, uh, online or on your computer, and then review them later. Um, but then the key is, not just to read the answer, but to actually try to, you know, quiz yourself. And that active recall is uh, what is key to you learning and, and memorizing it and understanding it, okay? And then using, again, that spaced repetition, spaced learning, you want to review it over time. So you want to study it once. You don't want to just study it once and say, okay, I got it, okay? You know, if you the first time you, you study something, the next day, you know, again, you're going to pick out the most important positions. You know, I'm not saying memorize the whole game. I know there are some people out there who recommend that. And uh, and there's times I've done that, actually. Some of my favorite games, I can almost uh, go through all of the moves just because I've studied them over time uh, many times. But you want to take, you know, from a master game, maybe the three or four most instructive positions and create some type of way to remember it, like a flashcard or something like that. Okay, and uh, we'll do other videos about this uh, space learning because it is an important concept uh, for learning in general, not just for chess, but we can apply it to chess. So um, active recall, basically you want to produce the answer after you've studied it. You want to quiz yourself to make sure that you remember it. Okay, our fifth principle is that of revision. Okay, and the idea here is that uh, you may learn things over time and... Yeah, you know, one of my favorite authors is Yasser Siran, and Yasser Siran likes to say uh, certain phrases, and so I will repeat those when I am learning something. But eventually, as you're getting better, as you learn more, as you're becoming more knowledgeable, you want to put them in your own words, okay? You want to own them, okay? So instead of quoting an author, you want to say it from your own uh, I guess your own person, okay, uh, and that's owning the material. So it's a few ways to help you uh, move along this process, and one of the ways is to uh, simplify things, okay. So if you are writing notes about a game, uh, how can you make it uh, simpler? You know, how can you explain it to a five-year-old? Okay, that's one of the, uh, uh, you know, there is a professor. I think his name was uh, Feinstein, and he basically. Uh, said, you know, you should be able to explain your concepts to a five-year-old. And if you can do that, you really understand it because you're really understanding what the essence of that concept is. So simplifying is one way. The other way is to associate. So you want to associate concepts that you are learning to other ones you've already learned. That's why it's important to understand the names of these uh, different, like say, tactical motifs or strategic motifs, like uh, backwards pawns, double pawns. You want to understand what all these are because uh, now you have a language to use when you're um, when you're describing uh, chess positions and chess structures that you see in your games or in games that you're studying. So you want to associate them. For example, uh, uh, there's a strategic technique with the exchange sacrifice, you know, or positional sacrifice, and you uh, there, it may be sp in specific pawn structures. For example, there's a lot of exchange sacrifices in the uh, uh, dragon variation of the Sicilian. So you want to associate. Uh, one concept, you know, that specific opening or opening structure that you study with the tactical and strategic motifs that are common with it. And then as you're studying more and more games, you're connecting it, you're always connecting it back to your old knowledge, and that's strengthening those that knowledge uh, in your mind and it, so that you can produce it uh, on the board when the time comes. And finally, a correcting. Um, and the idea here is that over time, as your knowledge increases, you are going to correct old assumptions and old uh, stereotypes that you, maybe you did, okay? Like uh, uh, the big ones are things like, uh, you know, that you should castle early. And that's an important principle, but over time you'll see in certain openings, it's not good to castle early because you want to see where your opponent's uh, going to be playing or going to be attacking and then maybe castle on the other side, for example. Uh, so it's the idea of um, taking your knowledge to the next level based on your experience and your, and your own um, knowledge that you've acquired over time. And also just, I mean, the biggest example of this is opening theory. 
Okay, like even though uh, we still play openings from the early uh, 20th century, um, the theory about them is both deeper as well as the correcting uh, mistakes and 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 uh, evaluations about specific positions. Does that mean that the uh, that old knowledge is useless? No, because you needed to build that foundation of understanding of strategic and positional aspects, and then build upon them. Okay, so you, it's uh, as they say, it's uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. You need that old knowledge. In fact, uh, studying the old games is very important, especially for uh, beginning players to uh, build that library of foundational knowledge that the modern grandmasters and masters of today have built upon. And, um, and you can do that process as well uh, through this principle of revision. Okay, uh, hopefully uh, those uh, five principles uh, will be helpful for you as you apply them. Um, to summarize, let's look at them real quick here. Uh, first one is selection. It uh, seems very simple, but it's very important. Make sure that you're selecting uh, books to study and, and parts of books to study that are relevant for your needs as well as appropriate for your level. Second one, active engagement. You want to be questioning. You want to think about how you look at a specific position before and during uh, reading what the author is trying to say about a position. Uh, you know, if, if, if you disagree, see what does this author, you know, assuming this author is usually uh, stronger than you are, why do they think this is uh, the way that things are? And try to correct that, that uh, preconception in your own mind. Uh, the second one is spaced learning. So study things over time, okay? So don't just study something once and then never look at it again. You want to study it once, and you want to study it again, maybe from a different angle or maybe uh, narrow down to the most important parts. But reviewing things over and over again will increase your understanding and also your memory of the topic. Uh, our fourth principle is active recall. Okay, active recall is much more effective than passive recognition, okay? So you can look at a game and say, you know what, I've studied that uh, Bobby Fischer game, but it's much different and demonstrates much better understanding when you can say, okay, in this position, Bobby Fischer played this from memory, okay? And that's what you want to uh, aim at. Now, obviously, these, the previous, you know, the other principles play into that. If you actively engage while you are learning, if you've selected games that are appropriate to you, it'll be easier to do that. So all of these principles kind of, kind of work together. And revision is kind of the uh, the final step that you're doing with all of this. Is that over time, the knowledge you have, you're categorizing it, you're simplifying it. You know, you're coming up with rules, and and you're doing this. Um, you're owning it. You're basically turning. Uh, you know, this, all of this knowledge, like this big mountain of knowledge, and you're turning, you're, you're honing it, you're sculpting it into your own uh, knowledge base for your games. And uh, hopefully, if you follow these five principles in your book study, uh, it, it will be very, um, you know, is it hard work? It could be hard work, but it, it's, uh, I think, necessary, uh, or at the very least beneficial in terms of accelerating your learning when it comes to studying chess books. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please press the like button. And if you're new to this channel, uh, Better Chess Training is about helping you to get better at chess, uh, helping you to understand chess better, uh, giving you some ideas for studying and training, as well as um, tips so that you can perform at your best when you're at the chessboard. So if that's something that you find interesting, please subscribe, and I hope to see you in a future video.